Well, last week we talked about speak up and share our faith. And I talked about that I was tired about, uh, of being on eco mode. I remember that. I said, I'm tired of being on eco mode. I want to go back to sport mode. And uh, I, want to know, I want you to know that our church is living back in sport mode. And nothing says sport mode around River Valley Church like starting a new campus. How many know what I'm talking about? Nothing says sport mode like we're back on the offensive and we're ready to start a new campus. And I want to let you know, I talked about it in the vision message in January, and I'm ready to reveal it today that we are starting a new campus in 2022 in Maple Grove area. That is where our next campus is going to be. And I want to let you know that from our Apple Valley campus, Caleb and Autumn Graham are the new campus pastors. And I want you to show your appreciation as they answer the call. They came here from North Dakota and they've been on staff for a couple years. They just felt this is the next move for them. And they gladly accepted that. And we're ready to send them there. They're going to be assembling a team and a launch team. And if you're interested in being back on sport mode, all right, you can text the word Maple Grove to 94,000. Text the word Maple Grove to 94,000, and we will help you to get uh, the info you need. If you know friends in that area, they're like, is there a River Valley Church coming that way? Matter of fact, I got an email this week. Somebody said, I have a friend in New York. Is there a River Valley in New York? I'm like, not yet. We're working on Maple Grove. <laughs> all right, yeah. I get requests all the time. Where's the next one? Where's the next one? But the next one is Maple Grove. So if you're interested, again, or if you have friends in that area and they want to get the info, and even if you're just leaning in, you feel like it's part of what your, your next step is to do, uh, please text the words, Maple Grove 94,000. And congratulations to Caleb and Autumn. We think you're going to do an amazing job. You're ready for this. You're ready for this. We're back on sport mode. Now today, after we did speak up and share your faith, um, I want to talk to you about uh, being hot and being salty for God. Hot and salty. All right. Some of you are like, where's the scripture for that? I'll get there. All right. I believe this. I believe the time for casual Christianity in America is over. I believe it's time for the church. It's got to stop being compartmentalized, weekends only. If it doesn't inconvenience you, if it's not too much to ask, if it's half-hearted, half-baked, half-lit, whatever, you know, uh, there's no more of that. It's time to go all in and say it's time for the church to be hot and salty. And you're still wondering where that verse is. All right, turn with me. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Jesus is speaking and he says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's where I get it, that you are supposed to be hot and salty. And you say, wait a minute, it says light. Don't you think you should say we should be bright and salty? I just want to tell you right now, when Jesus was talking to them, they were not thinking about flashlights, on, off, on. They were thinking about that. They were thinking about fire. They were thinking about candles and lamps and bonfires and bigger fires. Any light that was being done at that point was light that was coming from fire. So give me the latitude because I think the church doesn't need to just be on. The church needs to be on fire. The church needs to be hot right now and saying, we're going to be part of this. We're going to be hot and we're going to be salty. Now, I'll start with that, with being hot, with being the light, with being the flame of God for this world. All right. It's the only explicit statement that Jesus states to his followers that it's something that he is also. Follow me. It's the only explicit statement. Jesus is like, you are the light of the world. You're going to go out and be a hot flame to this world. You are the light of the world. Now, it's interesting. He calls himself the light of the world. He calls you and I the light of the world, and he calls himself the light of the world. Matter of fact, he called his disciples the light of the world before he called himself the light of the world. 
Think of that. And he's saying, if you are my disciples, if you said yes to Jesus, if you have given your life, if you're a Christ follower, you don't have a choice. You are the light of the world. Jesus is saying, I want you to go out into the world and be that light in a, in a world that's so dark, in a world that's so desperate, in a world that's gone mad with evil. He's like, I want you to go out and be the light. The church has to be hot with a flame being the light to this world. And we've been given the honor and privilege to do that. It's an amazing thing. He didn't say, all right, you guys just follow me and study and stay huddled up in church and I'll let the angels go be the light. No, he didn't do that. He said, you guys, you, the church, all of you are all the light of the world. You get to go out in the world and be this flame for me, this bright thing for my glory. And he's like, you're going out there. And he says, I don't want you to be hidden. I want you to, to be on a, on a stand. I want you to be shown. Again, we think like, I, 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 the reason I wanted to go to hot and not just, you know, the light or bright was, as I was studying for this, I really did. I was thinking like, it's a flashlight. Like I'm the, you know, we're the light. Okay, yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute. It's so easy on, off, on, off, on, off. And I was like, no, they were like, if you're following Jesus, you're a flame and you're on fire and you are hot for God, and they were protecting it. They didn't want it to blow out. They, didn't, they, they couldn't just be like on, off, on, off. They could do that. They were like, if we're on, there's a flame, there's a passion, there's a burning, and, and the only thing they could do is hide it, and Jesus is like, I don't want you to hide it. And so I'm like, okay, it's got to be that God wants us to be on fire for him, passionately filled up with the power of the Holy Spirit, and we're not gonna hide. We're gonna go out there and be bold and say, Here's what we believe. Here's what God's called us to do. Now, when you're the light and when you're hot for God, um, that's attractive to some and it's attacked by others. When you're gonna be a light, when you're gonna be a flame, when you're gonna bring the light of God into this world that the Bible says loves darkness, it's going to be celebrated by some and it's gonna be attacked by others. And so let me just give you a few things that are celebrated about being hot, about being the flame for God, about being the light. And if I use light, flashlight, hot, you get it. You understand what I'm saying. Now, one of the things that light does when it comes into a room is it illuminates and it brightens up everything and it shows what's in the room. It shows what's available. It just, it kind of broad, it, 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 it lets everybody see what's there. And I'll say this, the older I get, the more light I need. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I mean, the older I get, the more light. I go to those restaurants and I go to a restaurant that's nice. It has ambiance, a little dark. And I look at that menu and I'm like, I can't see a thing. I'm like, hold it that far away. I have Becca hold it across the table, still can't see it. I get the flashlight out shining. <laughs> you know, like, how many know, how many have turned on your phone? Honestly, you've turned it on, turned that light on and you blind everyone in the restaurant, right? And so I found this app and I can just turn my light on real subtly, just at like 10% and then it magnifies. Somebody is shining their light. Turn that light off in the church. <laughs> it's like a concert. We're all like, ah. Oh. But I do that. I, I, I've got to see it. I've got to see. And so I'm looking at that. Have you, how many have heard of that blackout dining? Have you heard of that blackout dining? Where people, blackout dining is where people go into a room and you sit down and then they turn out all the lights. The, the wait staff has like, infrared things so they can put the food in front of you. You can't see a thing. It's pitch black, blackout dining. And you're there and they put stuff in front of you and they say, go ahead and eat. Not me. <laughs> Not me. I want to see it. How many know like I'm assessing what to start with? Like, all right, that right there, dessert. All right, yeah, we're starting right there. I'm, doing, I I'm eating with my eyes first. Yep. I'm eating with my eyes first. Now here's the beautiful thing. The world is eating with their eyes first. And when we come into their world, we illuminate who Jesus is. And they get to read the menu, the light is on. And they're like, wait, wait, I didn't know that that was a spiritual option. I didn't know that that hope could be available. I didn't know that that peace could come into my life. I didn't know, they're, they're looking at the menu. You are light, you are bringing that into their world and, and you're illuminating something and, and, and it's beautiful. They're eating with their eyes first before they can ever taste and see that God is good. They're looking at you, the menu. It's a responsibility. You are the light of the world. We share this with Jesus and we're pointing people to Jesus, but we are what they're seeing first. 
I mean, when I go into a place and I, I eat with my eyes first, sometimes I'll look and be like, sorry guys, it's too dirty. Too dirty, we can't, we can't eat there. I don't know about you, sometimes I go into a bathroom, I'll look at the bathroom, I'll go, oh, sorry, I'm out, I'm out. I'll never forget, we were on a global team and um, we were in China and, and we were there on the global team and it was the only place that we could eat in the town and, and Logan went early, you know, and, and went into the bathroom and he came out before the food got there and he said, hey dad, dad, um, when you pray over the meal today, he goes, really pray, really pray. Like, really, don't do like a thanks for the food, God. You know, like, really pray. It's dirty. Hey, the world is reading the menu. Are you bright? Are you pointing people to Jesus? Are you saying, I, I understand what you've called me to do, and I want to be on fire for you. I want to be on fire. Another thing that the light can do and that the warmth, the flame can do, it can warm people. It can warn people. There's a lot of depression in this world. There's a lot of misery in this world. There's a lot of people that have just a, a, a heaviness on them. And the light can come in there and it can warm them and it can inspire them. How many know what I'm talking about? The light can inspire. And I think about this, like Minnesotans, people that are watching online, if you're not from Minnesota and you're watching online, we love that you're part of our church, but you got to understand we're like what we are in Minnesota. Like it can be gloomy and 70 degrees and Minnesotans are depressed. We're like, it's, it's overcast. It's kind of gloomy. I can't see the sun. It's kind of gloomy. It can be minus 20 and sunny. And we're like, da, 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 da. <laughs> coming into church. We're like, it's fine. You know, it's minus 20. Car didn't start, but the sun is shining. The light is there. I feel good. We could not live in Seattle. None of us. All right. But we can inspire. And I believe this. Lots of Christians are partly cloudy with approaching rain and fog coming after that. We should be the light of the world, bringing light and lift into those places and saying, you know, hey, we want to bring this joy into this room. We want to lift this. We're bringing the light of God into this atmosphere and there. We should be able to lift the room. And by the way, side note, if anybody ever comes to you with something that is partly cloudy, foggy, maybe even disastrous, don't you dare add to the, groom, to the gloom and doom, you bring lift. If somebody says, hey, just got a diagnosis from the doctor, man, you bring light into that situation. You bring faith into that. You be the light like you're supposed to be. Could you imagine somebody bringing a, a problem to Jesus like, Jesus, my son has this disease. Jesus, yeah, bummer. I had a couple people die of that in Galilee too, you know. He wouldn't have done that. He'd say, where's your faith? He, he would bring the, the lift. If we are supposed to be the light, so we're going to inspire. One person said, some people are a joy wherever they go. Others are a joy whenever they go. All right, we want to be a joy wherever we go. Because of that, don't dim your light. Don't dim your light. Be hot. Be hot. Be on fire for God. Don't be quiet when you should speak up. That's just dimming the light. Don't go along with the crowd. When God says don't go along with the crowd, you're dimming the light. Don't deny the light. Some people deny like, are you a Christian? No, no, not me. My mom and dad are, but not me. Like, I'm totally not. I'm going to go to church occasionally, but I mean, I'm in a small group, but I'm not a follower. No way, not me. And I serve, but not me, you know, no way. Don't deny and don't let sin dim your light. Listen to what Ephesians 5, 8 says. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. That means our everyday behavior should validate that God said over us, you are the light of the world. When you go out in the world, you're going to live like the light. When you're living in your daily life, your behavior is going to say, I understand that I am supposed to be the light to this world. The place that God has placed me, I'm going to be the light. And I pray against a flashlight mentality that says on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off for faith. I pray that we say we are on all the time. All the time. We are going to be bright for God. And we're not going to say, you know, I, I'm going to let the, the, the world dim my light for Jesus. And I got to tell you right now, I, I, I battle some of the thoughts that you have as well. I watch our world and I see our society um, I was preaching at Shiloh Temple on Saturday morning this weekend, and I walked in the door, and the pastor's wife said, praise God, we didn't have a shooting last night in Minneapolis by our church. And I, it just hit me. And they've had funeral after funeral after funeral and shooting after shooting after shooting, and they're rejoicing that they had one night without a shooting. One night. 
And I thought this world has gone mad, it's gone dark, it loves violence, it loves crime, it loves hate, it, it, it loves all these things that are wrong. It's loving the darkness more than the light. And after a little while, you kind of feel like it's overwhelming darkness. And God just spoke to me and said, shine brighter. Like a, a candle is worthless in the middle of the day. It's not needed, but in the night it's needed. A flashlight is really not that valuable in the day, but at night, thank God for a flashlight. And so right now I'm saying like, praise God that we're right here where we are. We get to be the bright light. We get to be hot for God in Minneapolis, St. Paul, in Minnesota and around this world. I remember that song when I was a little kid. I don't always sing, but I remember that. This little light of mine. I'm gonna, how many remember that song? I'm gonna, this little light of mine. You're all singing. I'm going to let it shine. This, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. We won't do the second verse, but remember, <laughs> shine all over the neighborhood, right? Right? That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be the flame in the neighborhood. And then don't let Satan hit out. Don't let him dim it. Don't let him put it out. You are supposed to be the light and shine brighter in this world. Like I said earlier, it's attractive to some and attacked by others. It's an interesting thing. Right before Jesus tells his disciples, you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. Like, I'm sending you out. You're the light to show God's love. Right before that, you know what he talks about? Persecution. Right before that, right preceding that in Matthew. I'll read it for you. Matthew 5, 11, 12. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You're going to face persecution right before he tells them. You're the salt and you're the light. You're the hot flame of God going into the world to show them how good God is. He said, guys, by the way, when you go out to be the light, when you go out to be the salt, there's going to be persecution. There's going to be people are not going to like the light. They're not going to like the salt. They're going to fight against it. Some are going to love it and others are going to fight it. And some people say, well, I'm not getting persecuted lately. Well, maybe you're not shining very bright then. Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.12, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And I believe this. I believe persecution is coming to the church because we're shining bright as the light. I believe as we look at the qualities of salt and who we are, I believe persecution is going to be coming. People don't like it. If you stand for purity, people that want to live morally loose and anything goes will attack you. If you say this is the traditional view of marriage, people will attack you. They don't like that light. If you say I'm pro-life, people will attack you. You think about Texas. They did the heartbeat bill recently. You'd think that they said we're lining up all the kids and shipping them off into the ocean. And they, they're attacking Texas so bad. Boycott this, do that, do that. And then the house in our nation said, no, no, we'll, we'll secure abortion till 40, 40 weeks. For not 40 months, good night. It's long enough, 40 weeks, all right. But they said, we'll, we'll protect it for 40 weeks if you want. That, the, the darkness is attacking the light. If you say, I want to give to the church, give to missions, greedy people will say, why do you give so much? If you say, I'm going to have clean language, people with filthy mouths will come and attack you because they don't like the light. I can illustrate this in my own life. Years ago, when I was uh, just starting River Valley Church, and by the way, this weekend, by the way, this weekend, we celebrate 26 years as a church. 26 years. When I was starting the church and I would go around people and I'd maybe be in a crowd and maybe somebody was from our church and was their friends and somebody would be swearing 26 years ago, they'd say, hey, 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 that's my pastor. And the person would go, oh, oh, excuse my French. You know, like, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. All right, fast forward about 10 years from there, they'd be swearing and the person would say like, hey, 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 this, this is my pastor. You know, like you, there's some light, there's extra light here. Pastor's here, there's extra light. And, and people are like, oh, sorry, you know, didn't, didn't know that offended you, almost like, Sorry that that swearing offends you, you know, light boy, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? And that's how, they, and then now, now, 
when, it, when I'm around people and they're swearing their head off and they're like, hey, 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 that's my pastor. And they're like, oh, well, has he ever heard this one? Bing, 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 beep, beep, beep. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. In like 26 years, we went from excuse my French to have you heard this one? Because there's an attacking that's going on towards the light. There's an attacking that goes on towards it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you another thing. Sometimes they just don't like it. They attack it. And they're, they're just, and you're just even just being yourself, just in your normal everyday behavior. Like I'll go to a place and I'll be out in, in, in a community event. And somebody go, hey, can I get you a beer? And I say, no, I'll just take a Diet Coke. And all of a sudden they're like, you don't want a beer? And I'm like, no, I, I would just like a Diet Coke. Are you judging me for drinking a beer? I'm like, no, I literally just said, I just wanted a Diet Coke. That's all I did. I just said I didn't want a Diet Coke. You think you're better than me because you're not drinking a beer? I'm like, no, really. I literally just, I, did, I didn't say that. I just said Diet Coke. That's what I like. I don't drink beer, but I just wanted a Diet Coke. Oh, you think I have an alcohol problem? Is that what you're saying to me? You got any alcoholics in your family? I'm like, I literally just wanted Diet Coke. That's all. Even a Diet Pepsi will do. I'll just, whatever you got right now. <laughs> just, just, I just, that's all I want. Isn't that interesting? I didn't say anything. But just a little bit, I'll say, whoa, what are you doing? Why are you not living like I'm living? Why are you living different than me? Why are you doing that? Our boys would say that they would show up sometimes to parties and different things like, oh no, Connor and Logan are here. Extra light has shown up. Can't do that now, they're here. That's how the world is. And I'm praying that we will shine brighter in a world that needs to see the light of Jesus Christ. That's who we need to be. That's who we need to be. All right, now, I don't have enough time to get in this, but I'll go for a couple minutes on salty. Got to be hot and salty. Hot and, I like that. It sounds like something I want to eat. Hot and salty, you know? I like being that. I want to be hot and salty. Salt is so valuable. Salt is so valuable to the human body. Did you know that every cell in your body has salt in it? Every cell in your body has salt in it. You need salt. You have to have salt. It has to be part of your diet. And your body is so good at extracting the salt out of the foods that we eat. It's so good at doing that. But you have to have salt. Every cell in your body has salt. Salt is so valuable that the word really is salt money. And that's the word that we derive salary. Salary comes from salt money. When the Romans would pay their soldiers, they would pay them in pure salt. And that was salary, salt money. It's so valuable. When somebody's a great worker, uh, they say they're worth their salt. If somebody's an amazing person and they're like full of like goodness, you'd say that person is salt of the earth. Salt is a valuable thing. And as a Christian, we are spiritual salt. And I'll give you a couple things. First of all, we should add flavor to everything we do. We should add flavor to everything we do. We should make it better. We should have that object in mind that if God has placed us in a neighborhood and we're supposed to be the light and the salt, our salt is gonna make that neighborhood better. If we're in a school, our salt is gonna make that school better. If we're at a workplace, our salt is gonna make it better. We're there to add flavor. We're there to add another perspective. We're there to bring some life to it and have that salt and bring that flavor to it. And it's a beautiful thing that, that we bring this flavor to the government, to the people say, well, should the church be involved in politics? Well, we should bring our salt there. We should bring our salt there and say, hey, we want to make this better. We don't want to be eliminated. God told us to be in the mix and to bring the salt to whatever God, whatever's going on around us. And we need to, by the way, we need to be both salt and light. Salt, if you're just saying, I'm going to do that. I'm going to add, I'm going to make everything better. I'm going to really make it better. Matter of fact, if you read Matthew chapter five and you just did those things, if you said, I'm going to be meek, I'm going to uh, persevere, I'm going to be a peacemaker, I'm going to be merciful, all the things that Jesus says right before salt and light, that, that's really like salt stuff there. If you do just that without the light, you're almost like a social worker. How many know what I'm talking about? I'm making everything better. I'm making it all nicer. I'm doing everything. And I'm, I'm going to really be an outstanding citizen. But God says, I want you to be salt and I want you to be light. You're going to have to point things out. You're going to have to illuminate. You're going to have to reveal things. You have to be salt and light. One of, the, one of the most harmful things that a body can do is have too much salt. 
You can have too much salt. You can have high blood pressure. You can have bloating. And so people that struggle with this have to watch that we have, don't have too much salt. So some of you are like, oh, I like that part. I like the meek. I like the peacemakers. I like the social good. I like all those things that Jesus told us to do, but he told you to be the salt that brings the flavor. He told you to bring the light, but he also told you to be the salt that would preserve what's going on from rotting. Now, again, going back to flashlight, you know, wasn't invented until way after Jesus talked about this, but refrigeration being used in houses wasn't even invented. Like the electric refrigerator wasn't even invented until 1913. So when Jesus was talking about being salt, he was talking about packing the food in salt, packing the meat in salt. If you ever go on a global team, which I'd recommend that you go on as soon as possible, not recommend, I want you to go, you need to go. As soon as we can open up these countries and get out there, go on a global team, but you'll see in some of these countries where you're out in the, the far regions, you will see meat that is packed in salt. They are preserving the meat in the salt and the salt keeps it from rotting. It actually preserves it. And so what Jesus was like, you're the salt, they were thinking, okay, we are the preserving agent. We keep things from rotting. And the church has not done a very good job of keeping this world from rotting. And he's like, that's your job. You're supposed to go out there. You're like an antiseptic. You may not know this, but babies in, in the Bible times, if you, if you want to read it later, you can read it in Ezekiel 16, 4. Babies were actually scrubbed down in salt and oil. They would scrub a baby down after they were born in salt and oil, wrap them in clothes for about seven days. Then they throw those clothes out, scrub them down again in salt and oil. It was like an antiseptic that would keep them from being infected. And so this is something that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be a preservative. We're supposed to keep this world from rotting. And Jesus is like, what good are you if you're salt and you've lost your saltiness. What good are you if you're my followers and you, you don't actually add the flavor I need you to add and, and preserve this world from being so evil like it wants to be? I'm trying to help you to keep it from rotting and falling apart. You're, you're the salt. And he says, you're no good. He says, if you're no, like, you're, throw it on the ground and walk on it. Some of you that know this about salt, you're like, wait, 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 wait. Salt can't lose its saltiness. But see, the salt Jesus was talking about there was taken from the Dead Sea and it had all sorts of impurities in it. It wasn't the purest level of salt. And so the people would understand it. They'd be like, okay, you're talking about when we get that cheap salt and we got salt, but after a while, if we don't take care of it, the other things make it impure and it's worthless. It loses any value of it and the other things take over and it's no longer good for what we want it for. And then we just throw it out on the street. And he said, I need you as my followers to be hot, to shine bright, to be that flame. But I also need you to have that flavor and I need you to preserve this world from getting rotten. And he's saying, guess what? As believers, it's your honor, it's your privilege to be distinctive from the world. You get to go counter-cultural. You get to keep them from rotting. And as they're chasing after the things of the world and the sins of this world, he's like, no, no, you're gonna be salt in this world and you're gonna help slow down the decay. You ever wonder how bad it would be if the church wasn't here? And we're slowing down the decay. And he says, you know what? If you're going to sound like them, if you're going to act like the world, if you're going to look like the world, and you're going to be like the world, you know what the world's going to do? They're going to throw you on the ground and walk on you. The world has no use for a church that just wants to be like the world. There's no, there's no use for it. One theologian right now, he just said, uh, he said, if you want to be progressive and you want to be all just like them, he's like, there's no way. The only end of that is like death. There's no, like, you're nothing. You're just like them. And they're not looking for somebody in the church world to be just like them. The, the Lord is saying you should be the light in this world. You should be the salt in this world so that when people are living in darkness, wondering where there's hope, they find the light of Jesus. When they're living in these things that are sinful and wrong, instead of just saying, well, the church looks just like us, they find the hope of people that are living like salt in this world. And so I'm praying that our church will be hot and salty, shine bright for God, be a flame and be salty for God and say, God, we will, we will receive this. It's an honor. It's an honor that you would say, that's what you are. You don't get to opt out of this. That's what you are. 
This is what we are. That's what he said we are. And so I pray we'd see it as an honor. God, it's an honor. We get to be the salt and the light to this world. So God, I'm just praying right now that you'd help us to grab hold of that. It's time for us to be hot and salty. Flame, hot for you, God. Forgive us for just hiding the flame, thinking that it's just a flashlight on in this environment, off in this, on on Sunday, off at the workplace, on over there at Bible study in small group, but off when we're in the home life. God, it is on. We are the light and we are flaming hot for you. God, we are the salt and I pray we'd preserve this world from going rotten. I pray we'd bring the flavor that we need to, but God, that's just one part of it. Help us also to preserve and to stand out. And God, when we're attacked, I pray that we'd realize that you said, we're blessed, we're blessed. They hated you, they'll hate us for this too. But God, they're hating us because we're light and salt. It's, they're just hating because we're light and salt. And so God, I pray that we'd strengthen one another. We'd grab hold of that right now. And I pray for anybody that's facing that persecution right now and is wondering, why do they hate me? God, I pray that they'd realize they hate the light, they hate the salt, but God, you've called them to be the light and the salt and they are needed in that dark place now more than ever. God, help your church right now to be hot and salty. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen.